That is a great question, Yildin. Let's take a deeper look and see why this illusion actually holds true. This is actually the chocolate paradox illusion, that famous video on YouTube where you take the pieces of chocolate and you rearrange them and all of a sudden you have a piece that's missing. Look at this. We're going to take these pieces and we'll take those five square units and we're going to turn them 90 degrees and we'll fit that right there. And what the heck? Why does the area seem to go down by one square unit? Like magically, out of nowhere, we have a missing square. Where did it go? Well, let's, and, but if you see, the outlines are the same. The only difference is that one missing square in the corner. So why does this happen? Let's take a peek. Now, again, this red, this red triangle is in the lower left corner. Let's move it to the upper right. We rearrange that there. We're going to take this orange triangle, put it back in the lower left. And I want you to see something very carefully. Let's put a point right here, and let's put a point right over here. Now, to our minds and to our eyes, those three points look like they all lie in a straight line. But the reality is, they don't. Look. See what I mean? That was mean, wasn't it? So that means those three points are not collinear. They do not lie in a line. And the reason why, we, if we look at it mathematically, the slope of this hypotenuse, that orange hypotenuse for the orange triangle, is actually 6 to 11. We divide 6 divided by 11. That's the rise divided by the run. Uh, we also call that the gradient of the line there. The, that gradient is 6, 6 11. So roughly that rise is roughly 54.54% of that horizontal distance right there, the run. But if we look at this triangle right here, the slope of that triangle is actually 5 divided by 9, which is uh, 0.55555 repeating. Look at those decimal equivalents. They are like practically identical. They're only, the gradients are only off by one, one, less than like what, 1 one hundredth, right? And so that's, our eyes aren't going to be able to detect that well unless we zoom right in. So right here, that, this, this figure right here is actually not a triangle at all. It's actually a concave quadrilateral. That quadrilateral literally caves in on itself. Okay, like right here when I zoom in, see? That quadrilateral is caving in right there. But let's zoom back out. Let's get it to where we were. And if we actually move this right over here, right, whoops, hang on. Sorry. Let's get this out of here. Let's get this out of here. And let's put this right up here and right up here. Now we actually have, believe it or not, a hexagon. When you look at that and you say, no, Tim, that's a, that's a quadrilateral. One, two, three, four. No, it's a pentagon. One, two, three, four. It has five sides. No, 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 no. It has six. Why? Because let's look here. Let's look here. There's two of the corners of the hexagon right there. That's a corner right there? Yeah, it is. Look. Look. Right? See what I mean? One. These are two distinct sides. That is not one side. Those are two different sides. So in reality, when we think, gosh, is it really that surprising? Is it really that surprising to our eyes now that a, uh, a convex hexagon and a concave quadrilateral have different areas? Of course, it's not surprising. It's common sense. But that's why this illusion works.